Hello there, thank you for staying with us. Happy Easter and welcome to another edition of The Beam on Channels Television. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, the presidential declaration that the lockdown directive will continue for as long as it is needed has since cleared the doubts as to whether or not life will return to normal in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. However, in the past few days, Nigerians have complained about rising cases of alleged robbery and calling on the police to come to their rescue. So today on the program, we will be analyzing the social impacts of the lockdown from the criminological and psychological perspectives and its implications for social development. We will also look at how governance has moved online in the wake of the pandemic. But before we go into those conversations, let's first take you through what made the social media trends in the past week. Christians all over the world mark the resurrection of Jesus Christ after his death commemorated on Good Friday. Easter is preceded by Lent, a 40-day period of fasting, prayer, and penance, while the week preceding Easter is referred to as the Holy Nigerians couldn't help but call for help as unrest in some parts of Lagos and Ogun states rendered citizens helpless while they were robbed of valuables as the lockdown order hits hard. They called on the Nigeria police and the federal government to come to their aid. Well, there you go. Those were some of the most talked about hashtags in the past week. Yes, indeed, we talked about the presidential directive um, that came some time ago saying that um, the lockdown might continue as it is needed. But again, we have to remind you that the president is actually going to give a broadcast today at 7 p.m. So I'm sure he would be clearing the air on whether or not life will remain um, as it is. But moving forward, the country may be in a lockdown as a result of the coronavirus pandemic and the directive that most civil servants should stay home. One would think that governance is on a standstill, but with technology as an enabler, some government officials are not deterred and have continued to run their offices through video conferencing apps, as well as social media apps such as Twitter, Facebook, as well as Google+. But the question is, how effective has this option been? But joining us to look at this is Japet Omojua. He is an author, a blogger, a public speaker, socioeconomic commentator, and social media expert whose works have been translated to French, German, Portuguese, and Greek for audiences from these regions. He joins us via Skype from the UK. Um, Jaffa, it is a pleasure to have you on the program today. The pleasure is mine, Victor. How are you doing? Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Jaffa. How's it going over there? Fine, thank you. I mean, it's crazy in London, but um, I'm self-isolated, so I'd say fine. As you should, as you should. I mean, like you say, I'm in desperate times, call for desperate measures, but... Um, one of these desperate measures, as we've seen in the past, is the fact that now governments and, and governance is pretty much being run online. We've seen um, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK, tweet sometime uh, saying that he held the first digital um, executive meeting of the UK. So that's on one part. Back here in Nigeria, the Vice President has also been having meetings via Google Plus Hangouts. We've seen the Lagos State Executive Council as well, and also the Kaduna State Government also going virtual. But... The thing is, how, how effective would you say this has been? I think the effectiveness would be determined by the objectives of the different meetings. But beyond that, it's also the fact that they, they have little or no choice. They have to do what they have to do. And I also understand that with technology in the early days, you, you have, like, for instance, my classes moved online towards the last two or three weeks of, of term. And we had some hiccups with this or that, but ultimately eventually get to see that it's, it's effective but the, the usual hiccups with technology get to get to come in at times but generally speaking i think 
we have little or no choice and we have to make do what we have to make do it. And I think that's what governments are doing generally. All right. So, I mean, uh, some are saying that moving forward, this should be the norm. I mean, it will, it will reduce all the travel and all of the, you know, wear and tear. I mean, do you agree? In a way, I agree. But what do you mean by norm? Because to say this should be the norm means that there should be more of these than physical meetings. I, I don't, I think human beings are social in every sense. And when I say social, it goes beyond virtual meetings. It's about people seeing people. But I also know that the post-COVID-19 world will be a totally different world, that people will try to avoid um, gatherings that are, you know, I, I go for a lot of conferences that I feel like we probably should have had these meetings online. Whether it will be the norm or not, I don't know. But I think we will begin to now normalize virtual meetings. We'll begin to, you know, normalize e-governance, for instance, that I argued in my book. Um, but how normal it would be compared to what you used to hold is something that I can't tell. Well, so, I mean, you just made mention of the fact that your studies has also moved online. So apart from governance, we have now studies. We've seen videos of kids actually, you know, moving their studies as well online. But um, which other sectors do you think have benefited in this, in the wake of this pandemic where we don't have to, where we can't actually move um, around as the government has directed? I think it's smart churches and, and religious organizations. They've, they've moved online and churches that didn't used to have meetings online now have meetings online and they're recording, you know, I mean, some, some numbers are of course unbelievable, but generally speaking, they are recording numbers that they never would have thought of. So definitely churches, a lot of schools are also that didn't used to be online are also, you know, trying stuff. And I think also for creativity, a lot of people are creating content that never thought they, they could create content before. So there are people that didn't used to see themselves as comedians or online comedians that are now beginning to express what online comedians do. And I've seen one or two people that could actually continue to be perceived as that. So human creativity and our ability to, to evolve, we are quite resilient. And I think that even though a lot of people are dying, that's always going to be a tragedy and always going to be unfortunate. I think in this crisis, a lot of good things will also happen. I, I mean, so you were talking about creatives. Um, are you also referring to some of the challenges that have been going online? I've, I've seen quite a number of them. Uh, Bob, Daddy, Don't Rush. Which one have you participated in? Um, I like to watch. <laughs> I like to watch. Um, Bob, Daddy, the Don't Rush Challenge. There is the crazy quarantine radio from from uh, uh, Lanes. There is also what PDD is doing, raising a lot of money. Last I checked, he's raised three million dollars from his Instagram page. Of course, he has a lot of big people that will also donate that probably won't even watch from Instagram. So a lot of very very entertaining stuff, very very proactive um, um, people raising money. Other stuff that are like mm, blah. But the bottom line is, people are just. You know, trying to survive the lockdown because lockdown is not a natural phenomenon. I'm not designed to be in this enclosure. I'm designed to move, to meet people, to engage. And so the human will find a way to respect itself when it finds itself in such a situation. And that's what human beings are doing. I'm just happy that other people are also looking for a way to be useful and to help other people at this time. Well, um, I have to say thank you. Hopefully, um, all of those online meetings, challenges, creativity, as well, of gov as, well as governance um, will, at the tail end, yield um, some fruits also. Um, we've seen also technology giants trying to, uh, you know, create all those apps that will help, you know, to detect people who have the COVID-19 so you can stay safe and, you know, just uh, stay apart. But I have to say thank you again, uh, Jafet Amojwa, you joined us from, the, from London in A the pleasure. UK. Of course. Uh, stay safe okay. again and uh, enjoy the rest of the Easter celebration from the confines of your apartment. <laughs> Let me just leave it at that, Jaffa. Thanks again. All right.